Stephanie, I have to push back a little bit about your China view. Because uh, the trade data yesterday suggested, and you're talking about the consumption recovery having more legs, uh, but the trade data so far still uh, is underwhelming, especially on the import side. So what is going to change, you think? What will give? Well, again, we are looking at one data point, and uh, there was disappointment uh, in regards to exports, but also the import side. So the import side, when it comes to consumer uh, demand um, from uh, goods from uh, Europe and, uh, and, and the U.S., of course, that is something you could backtrack and say, okay, the local consumer doesn't have any appetite at the moment. But what you can see domestically happening is actually that during the, uh, the times of COVID, a lot of effort was put also in uh, beefing up the circular economy within the country. So the domestic um, demand um, uh, and the, the focus towards the domestic economy should still work very well. What data Although, point are you following that convinces you that the consumer is on the mend? Actually, we are watching a lot of uh, uh, data points that are not retrospective. We're looking at... Uh, um, Perspective. I was, I was just saying, you know, travel data, for instance. We just had the long golden week uh, happening. Or short golden pent-up demand, no? Coming out of the pandemic, I mean, how structural is that? That's going to perhaps play out for a few quarters and then wane. Well, actually, pent-up demand, yes, one part to it. But also you can see that pent-up demand amidst uh, uh, actually a, uh, a challenging backdrop because everybody knows unemployment is an issue. You know, some of the risk appetite in terms of the property market, et cetera, remains an issue. So, yes, there is uh, a pent-up demand, but there's also this is also a sign when people are traveling and consuming on the ground and the bounds that there is uh, more and structurally going on going forward. So we remain, medium term, still very constructive on China. All right, so given those broad strokes, what's your latest investment strategy? So we are still uh, remaining very optimistic around uh, the fixed income space. We are focusing very much on investment grade, which, you know, the combination of um, um, looking at a shallow and short recession scenario and for rates to peak, but then, and this is where we disagree with the markets, we don't see rates coming down anytime soon. We actually see them pausing for much longer than is expected right now. So you look at the investment grade spectrum, that should be something that gives you, in terms of risk reward, uh, more joy for longer. So even if we have a recession and a mild one at that, you think the Fed would stomach it, the, the uh, US government, the Federal Reserve would stomach it and not swing the other way with rate cuts? Not swing the other way the way this is being priced at the moment. So, and I think we already had a good blueprint uh, from Australia last week, you know. You have a central bank that comes in after 10 consecutive hikes, says we have to pause, we have to look at what the economy, how the economy is doing, how it's been digested. And then um, uh, a meeting later, you actually need to uh, uh, hike rates again. Mm 